Let's go now to Ian Begg in London. He's a professor at the European Institute at the London School of Economics and Political Science. Ian, welcome. So we hear the UK complaining about this, has major problems with how the protocol is working, but is this not what the UK signed up for when it chose Brexit in the first place? Exactly so. There was a, an agreement on the Northern Ireland Protocol as part of what's called the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, signed on Christmas Eve 2020. I think it'd be fair to say that it was all cobbled together at rather short notice. And part of the difficulty is that something which is designed to solve a very particular problem does tend to unravel when it's exposed to the realities of what happens in Northern Ireland. In particular, the, the two communities in Northern Ireland, the, the nationalist community, which looks towards Ireland, and the unionist community, community which looks towards uh, United Kingdom, tend to view the protocol very differently. In very short terms, the unionist community feels it is the great loser from this, and that in turn imperils the peace process, which is precisely what the protocol was designed to enhance. So we see the EU agreeing to drop 50% of customs checks on goods that are going from the UK to Northern Ireland. Isn't that pretty generous? I mean, it seems like it's willing to bend to some extent to meet the UK where it wants to be. It certainly is. And it's, it's one way in which you try to simplify this. But what it comes up against is the simple impossibility of not having a border anywhere. The choice in the protocol was that the border should in effect be in the Irish Sea between two parts of the United Kingdom, Great Britain on the one hand and Northern Ireland on the other. Now, you can simplify that process by proposing what the EU seems to be doing, which is to offer much more straightforward controls on and checks on, on the goods transited, transiting between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Not in the other direction. Nobody cares about that. And the reason the, the, the EU is so insistent on this is that it wants to protect the integrity of what's called the single market. Sure. Goods that enter Northern Ireland from Great Britain can then move easily into Ireland and through Ireland to the rest of the EU. And that's the incompatibility. Yeah. So what happens now? How is this likely to end up? Well, I sense pragmatism coming to the fore here because some of the checks were pretty petty on medicines which are being shipped from uh, Great Britain to Northern Ireland, on sausages. Can you believe it? Yes. Sausages was the, the trigger point for this, that uh, <laughs> British sausages, which uh, according to many continental standards are not that great anyway, <laughs> were being stopped from going over to Northern Ireland. And the Northern Irish say, yes, we, want, we demand our British bangers, as we, as we call them. However, there is a Northern Ireland industry which produces sausages and you can import them from south of the border in the Republic of Ireland. So although it's, it sounds almost comical, it's the sort of thing that triggers the, the rea reactions we've seen. If pragmatism can prevail, you can minimise these checks in a way which maybe defuses it. But what you'll never get away from is having to have some checks. And that's a consequence of the way the protocol was drafted. Right. There was always going to be a breaking point, and it turns out that breaking point is British bangers. Ian Begg, thanks for joining us.